I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create that awesome magic spell effect in Adobe After Effects. Alright, so before we start this tutorial, I also would like to say that you will need a plugin for this, a third party plugin called Optical Flares from Video Copilot. I will put a link to it in the description. You can do it in different ways, but I personally think that this is giving me the best results for this effect, so that's why I'm going to use it. And if you want to use the exact same footage that I am using, uh, you can also download that with the link in the description. So you will get a footage file and also a free smoke element file uh, that we will need in this tutorial. Also, if you're interested in filmmaking assets and things to make your workflow easier, definitely check out our website. We have a bunch to offer. Also, a link in the description. So, without further ado, let's fire up Adobe After Effects and get started. So, right here we are in After Effects and we have our footage file right here. So, as you can see, uh, we have this kid blasting with his wand and then we have some cans falling over. Um, yeah, we actually did this as a practical effect to, to simulate that impact and we have like like a little wire right here so uh, that will be a different tutorial if you would like to remove that um, but all right so we have this scene from a project that we're currently working on uh, pretty exciting and then we also have this free smoke element pack and this is something that we're working on uh, we're working on a new smoke pack uh, in 4k it will be released really soon but it's not done yet but we already have this small test file that we will be using for this tutorial but by the time that you are watching this tutorial it might be possible that it's already out yet so definitely check out the description for all that information uh, but it's going to be a really cool smoke pack with a lot of variation in 4k so you can do a ton of cool things for motion graphics and visual effects with that pack so I'm going to drag my footage into a new composition right here and then I will create a new layer so new solid layer and rename this to flare make it comp size black and click OK We'll go to Effects, Video Copilot and apply the Optical Flare Defect right here. And then we are going to jump into the options and actually delete all of these elements by clicking right here. So delete all of them. And then we're going to the Lens Objects right here to the Basic and apply a Glow Effect like so. You can also go into the Custom and add some custom things like, uh, but we'll look later into that. So click on the Glow and scroll down a little bit. I like to set my Gamma at like 0.6, something like so. So we have a little bit more contrast in here, maybe 0.7. Uh, would be good too and then for the scale I'm going to set this to 100 brightness to 100 like so and we're going to change the color to some kind of blue color so uh, for the global color something like this actually looks really cool okay there we go click OK and then for the customs uh, we can apply some extra things to it to make it a little bit more interesting uh, something like so and um, maybe this bright Pike, uh, and also change the color right here to something maybe really blue or you can actually go like orange or whatever uh, you can do some funky stuff in here click OK once you're satisfied and change the scale to maybe something like 50 and click OK so now we have our kind of magic spell look so this looks pretty cool I always like to do is custom so we it's exactly how I want I and mean, you can actually also save this as a preset uh, to use later on in future projects okay so we have our flare what I want to do is change my screen mode right here and if you don't see that toggle the switches uh, right here on this button we're going to change our screen mode to a screen like so so go to the position when he's actually starting his act right here so we have it right here uh, we're going to click on our flare and actually move one frame more and go to the optical flares effect right here so at this position in time we're going to click on the stopwatch for the position and click on the stopwatch for the brightness this is going to make a keyframe if you press U on the keyboard you're going to reveal these keyframes in your um, timeline in your timeline right here so we're going to position this flare right here and if you don't see this little ball here just make sure that you have optical flares uh, optical flares selected move one frame forward I'm actually using page up and page down to move one frame forward or backwards so page down is forwards page up is backwards and if you hold shift while doing that uh, it actually jumps 10 frames at a time so one frame forward and actually readjust the position to the wand like so uh, we'll put it right here and then we can actually position it like right here and then move until we actually get the impact of our cans so that's right here we have our impact so we're going to position this in the center of our cans and now we have this kind of animation already so he's throwing the flare 
into the cans. Okay, pretty cool. So at the beginning again, so let's go back to the uh, beginning of our animation. We want to set the brightness to zero, move like two frames, set it to 250, um, and then further into time, just when the impact is happening, I want to change this back to 100. The reason why is actually right here it's really big and right here it's really small. I'm not actually scaling it down. It looks like it's getting further into space and it's also farther away from my camera. So by making it smaller, it looks like it's yeah, just in 3D space. It all it all depends on the situation, but you can fake the perspective just by scaling things. Uh, so it's all simple tricks that make the effect work. Okay, so right here we have the impact and then we want to make it one frame further. We want to make it like 200 and then one frame after that or two frames after that. Let's change it back to 0%. So now we have something like this. Okay, so really cool. We already have our impact. And now at the impact again, like right here at the actual impact, so where the brightness says uh, says 200, we're going to click on our flare, go to edit and duplicate our layer. We're going to trim our layer to that position. So take it right over here, hold shift and make it snap to our time scrubber. So now we have another flare to work with. I'm going to solo this flare for now and go to the effects and preset right here, window effects and presets if you don't see that. And we're going to search for turbulence displace. I'm going to apply this to my layer right here and then we can increase our amount to something like 100, maybe the size to 50 or 25 or let's go for 50, maybe the amount for 150 and the complexity, let's change that to seven. Okay, so now we have something really cool like this. Uh, we can play with the evolution until we have something that we're happy with, um, but we can actually increase the amount a little bit more. So we get something like this and also the scale. Uh, let's also increase the scale to something like this and the amount to 200 and 200 should work. Okay, so there we have it, it looks pretty cool. And I'm also going to alt click on the stopwatch for the evolution and just enter time times uh, 200. So we have some basic animation in there that's just going to animate, um, well, our turbulence effect. Actually, I'm going to increase it to something like 2000, okay. So as you can see, we have some variation if we move in space. Okay, so, uh, well, into time. Okay, so I'm going to close this down and unsolo this again. And if we are going to look at this, we're actually going to see that it's going to give it like a little bit more depth in the scene as well. So uh, it, it looks a lot more detailed as you can see right here. I'm also going to change the color and make it a little bit more vibrant, so more like a blue color like so. We can also apply effect color correction curves and increase our contrast a little bit like so by creating an S curve. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. You can also apply effect blur and sharpen and unsharp mask and increase this to something like 25 and increase the scale to something like 150. Maybe the blue is a little bit too intense. I'm going to soften this. Actually, don't exaggerate with colors. Uh, this actually makes it look more fake. So I'm going to set it back to white actually. Okay, let's preview. Okay, so this might be a little bit too intense. So what I will do here is press U on the keyboard and for the brightness of uh, this effect, I'm going to set this to 100 right here and then right here at the end. I'm actually going to offset this a little bit so we have something like this. Also press E twice on the keyboard, tap it real quick so we actually see our expression. I'm going to set this to 500. I think 2000 is a little bit too quick. So uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, it looks pretty good just offset or brightness a little bit closer to the end here. Okay, so now it looks like we have some kind of electric shocks in our uh, shot here. So this looks pretty cool. Um, maybe you don't want to exaggerate too much with the sharpness because you can see what it's actually doing. Uh, it really depends on the shot that you're trying to achieve. I just wanted to show you uh, what options we have here. I don't want to use the Unsharp mask, uh, mask actually. I'm just going to delete it. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. I think I'm satisfied with this effect. We really have this extra touch on our impact. And now to finish it off, we are going to add some smoke so it actually looks like it's blowing away dust, it actually has an impact and stuff like that. So I'm going to click, um, well, go to my project manager, click on my free smoke elements pack, well, uh, video file, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to drag this into my timeline like so. I'm going to offset it to like around here so we are where it's already like blown out and it's already fading away actually. So I'm going to shorten this, 
to this position. And then on this impact, I'm going to position this right here. So this actually looks pretty good. I'm also going to click on my ellipse tool right here. So click over here, drag to ellipse tool and create an ellipse mask for our smoke. Hold space bar to actually move it around right here. Press Press F on the keyboard and increase your feather so we have it fading away and also change the blending mode to a screen so the black actually disappears and if we're going to solo this just with our video file we can actually see our smoke right here. So let's see, it looks pretty good actually. We're going to manually adjust it, you can also track your shot if you really want to but I'm just going to press P on the keyboard and create a new keyframe at the beginning of our smoke layer and just move around a little bit and just make sure that it's staying into position uh, good enough so maybe like right over here. So this looks pretty cool. I'm going to click on my smoke element pack, go to effects, color correction, curves, and increase the brightness of my smoke and decrease the shadows like so. I'm also going to my uh, RGB red channel and I'm going to increase the reds just a touch. And for the blues, I'm going to decrease it. So it becomes like a warmer tone. So you can see before and after it looks a lot better. You can also go to effects, sharpen, uh, and sharp mask right here and change this to also 25 and 150. So uh, now we have something more like this, looks a little bit more magical, maybe a little bit too much, 75 should work well. Okay, so there we have it, a little bit more um, yeah, explicit, let's say, and now we have our smoke like so, it looks pretty good. I'm going to uncheck this solo and also for the footage and let's see our preview. Okay, so that looks pretty cool, um, I'm going to press S on the keyboard to scale it down because it's a little bit too big and I'm also going to press T on the keyboard to change it to something like 50 so it can be really subtle uh, it should be barely seen and actually the movement of our smoke isn't really working here so I'm going to press P on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for our smoke and I'm going to solo my original file right here I'm going to use the tracker actually so track motion zoom in here right here in this corner and then move frame by frame and it should work and let's press play and see what it's doing all right so it's tracked perfectly i'm going to create uh, create a new I'm going to right click new and create a new null object and rename this to track and then I will go to edit target for the tracker edit target change that to the track uh, null object track okay and I'll also apply I forgot to apply this X and Y click OK and then let's go back to our composition press U on the keyboard for the track and you'll see uh, the position keyframes right here so I'm going to unsolo everything and I'm just going to bind my um, free smoke element pack to that track so now it should move along with our scene and look a lot better all right so that looks really cool what you can do as well is add some kind of spark effects we actually have an action pack that we will be releasing soon as well it's like that we're going to release a bunch of stuff real soon and actually it's true um, but we'll be releasing some kind of particles and you can actually set off some particles right here like sparks uh, to actually finish off the effect as well if you want to uh, so you have more detail in there you can really build up on this effect you can do some really cool stuff what I also like to do is actually select all of my layers layer pre-compose and rename this to the effect and click OK and then actually to the beginning of our effect right here and that's right here I'm going to right click time enable time remapping and click on the keyframe for the time remapping right here move a few frames to the impact that's right here and I'm going to create a new keyframe for the time remapping then I'm going to select my keyframe right here and my last keyframe and drag them over a touch like so and then I'm also going to shorten my timeline like so press e and let's do a ramp preview and that way we have like a faster kind of um, spell effect 
this might be a little bit too fast so we can adjust this uh, readjust this like so and actually preview it again because I think it looked a little bit too slow at the beginning I think this looks a lot better and now it's all up to the sound effects to get some really cool sound effects to make it work all together so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel for more definitely check out our website we have a bunch of cool products uh, so yeah links in the description and see you in the next one goodbye